Today's video is all about how to slow travel in Turkey in the winter. We've spent over a month on the turquoise coast of Turkey and we found the Mediterranean coastline to be an amazing place to chase the sun. Now we would recommend the turquoise coast for any time of year, but stick around till the end of the video to find out why we recommend coming in the winter even more than the summer. I'm Jillian. And I'm Stephanie. We're a couple who saved and invested our way to financial independence, which allowed us to say goodbye to our corporate jobs and head out on the road for a slow travel adventure across Europe with our two little dogs. To take a look at our slow travel lifestyle, you can check out each of our destinations in the link above, as well in the description below. We post a new video every Thursday, so be sure to subscribe and also hit that notification button so you never miss a video. We've been enjoying the turquoise coast for over six weeks now. We started off in the tiny little community of Feralia, which is by the Butterfly Valley. Then we parked ourselves for a full month in the small city of Fetia, which is right on the coast. Finally, we're here now in the little town of Cash, which is just a gorgeous little place that we're really enjoying. In the time that we've been here, we've been hiking, we've been enjoying the waterfront, we've been sampling Turkish cuisine, and we've been visiting ancient ruins. It's been amazing. This is all part of our slow travel lifestyle where we can stay a little longer in each place, get to know some of our neighbors, learn a few words, and just get a taste of local life. When it comes to spending time in Turkey in the winter, we strongly recommend heading down to the turquoise coast, and here are our tips for how to make the most of your visit. Let's begin by talking about where the turquoise coast is actually located. So this is the southern coast of Turkey and it is served by the Dalaman and the Antalya airports. So either one of those airports can give you entry into the area depending on of course which city or town or community you'd like to base yourself in. Now the place that becomes your home base, um, that really depends on what you would like to do and the kind of size that you're looking for. So we have now stayed in everything from a very tiny little community to a small size city where there were a lot of different amenities so again it just depends if you want a little bit more infrastructure that would be provided by a small city where there are malls and shopping opportunities available or if you're looking to be a little bit more remote and feel like you're having a real getaway from all the busyness of city life if you want to take a look at where we stayed when we were based in the town of Fetia, we'll put a link up here and in the description below and it gives a little tour of the Airbnb but also gives you a general sense of the neighborhood that we were in and what the town of Fetia is all about. Now let's get into what to expect in terms of weather. In winter on the coast, you'll see a mix of sun with some rainy days and the temperature in the low teens for Celsius and somewhere around 50 to 60 Fahrenheit. So we've been pretty glad to have warmer weather clothes for the evening, but in peak heat of the day, some days I've been walking around in a t-shirt and being quite comfortable. I would say that you can't expect to go swimming in this weather, although we have seen a few brave souls in the water, but it's certainly a perfect temperature to get out on the trails. In terms of accommodations, if your trip is anything longer than a few days, we always recommend choosing an Airbnb over a hotel. In fact, you can take a look at our recent video, we'll put a link up there and in the description below about how to pick the perfect Airbnb. So for us, an Airbnb is a place where we can really make ourselves at home, especially over a longer trip. So we can do a little of our own cooking if we like, you can do some laundry, have a little bit more room to spread out. Just makes everything a little bit nicer in terms of the slow travel, longer term experience. The other thing that's good about an Airbnb versus a hotel is you're going to get a lot closer to what would be a local price for accommodation. So a hotel is always going to be a bit more expensive, but especially if you're going to the turquoise coast in the winter, you'll find Airbnb very cost efficient. For a shorter trip, we would certainly recommend considering a guest house or a little hotel. In fact, when we stayed in the little community of Fralia, we were there in a guest house for a few nights and that gave us great proximity to some of the hiking that we wanted to do as well. There was someone else to make us a lovely meal at the end of the day when we were tired from all of our hiking and exploring. Now getting into the activities that are available. These are a little bit different in winter than what you'd find in summertime. For example, the boat tours that are so popular in the summer are not running in the winter. So instead, it's a great time to take advantage of all the hiking opportunities, such as those along the Lycian Way, which is a 500 kilometer long trail all the way along the coast. 
So we've been making the most of all these hiking opportunities, whether it be for just a short morning hike or even a full day where we bring a picnic along and we can sit somewhere at the edge of a cliff looking out over the incredible views along the coastline and just making a wonderful day of it. Beyond just hiking, the other thing this area has in abundance are ancient ruins. So we've had the amazing opportunity to be the only ones at a site of ancient ruins. So we visited a number of them, but one that is standing out for us that is so spectacular was Patara, where we got to be the literally the only people in an amphitheater that was originally built for 6,000 people. More recent ruins, so not ancient, but dating back from the 1920s, we had again the opportunity to be the only people in what is essentially a ghost town. So this is the village of Kayakoi that was evacuated by the Greeks during the 1920s population exchanges between Greece and Turkey. And it was just both eerie and beautiful to be wandering around these ruins. They are spread out across the whole valley um, and they're just so beautiful and a little bit spooky. It was just a really magical way to spend an afternoon. And where there's a coastline, you will find beaches and they are in no short supply along the turquoise coast. Even though it's too chilly for a swim, we enjoyed lovely picnics on some of the beaches like Kabak Beach and as well Patara Beach, which is this amazing 18 kilometer long beach, also very wide, which was just a breathtaking place to go for a long walk and have a picnic. For the brave, a fun and scenic option is paragliding from the cliffs above Oludenes. So that's an activity that is in fact offered year round. So I know we've mentioned hiking, we've now mentioned paragliding. You don't need to be an adventure traveler to enjoy some time on the turquoise coast in the winter. So the other option is just simply to make the most of the beautiful little fishing villages and the coastal cities here. So we've had some amazing times sipping a little tea in the charming little center square of the town of Cash, where we're located now. We've also spent many hours walking along the beautiful waterfront of the city of Fetia, which is just kilometers, a beautiful coastline that is filled with little cafes and little parks and places to take in the beautiful scenery, which is snow-capped mountains in the distance and the Mediterranean at your feet. So it's a really lovely place to have a relaxing time. For getting around, there are these local minibuses called Dalmush, which are widely available and really inexpensive, just a dollar or two to get from town to town. For another option, if you want a little more independence, you can consider renting a car, which comes at a very reasonable price in the low season. We're just paying $9 per day, and it's great to have that flexibility to head off to different sites on your own schedule. Now let's talk about the food. So to be honest, we came to the coast after spending a full month in Istanbul where we did some amazing eating. So Istanbul has a very developed, very competitive and exciting street food culture and we sampled a lot of great things. If you want to take a look at some of the amazing food that we had in Istanbul plus the other highlights of our slow travel there, you can click on the link up there or check it out in the description below. For dining out on the coast, it's important to note that many restaurants are in fact closed because it is the low season and there aren't as many tourists, but there are still lots of great restaurants available. And of course you can always go where the locals go because they know what the good food options are. We also found that the cost of ingredients for cooking at home was just so inexpensive and the ingredients themselves were of such high quality that we really enjoyed making our own meals. So you can get a great mix for when you are slow traveling. So finally, we're going to explain why it is we think visiting the turquoise coast in winter is even better than visiting in the summer. First of all, you'll have the place to yourself. There's no traffic on the roads. You can catch a picture of that sunset without anyone in the background. And you can wander the ancient ruins at your own pace without any busy crowds. The second reason is the cost especially for accommodation. So what we found doing a direct comparison that the cost for staying in an Airbnb in the winter time is about a quarter of the cost of what it is to stay in the summer. So that makes a real difference, especially if you want to slow travel and really take your time in the turquoise coast. In fact, we've tallied up all of our costs from our full month staying in the town of Fetia. So we'll share the link here and also put it in the description below. And you can see just how inexpensive the turquoise coast can be. So those are our recommendations for slow travel in Turkey in the winter. In our next video, we'll be saying goodbye to Turkey and heading off to a whole new country, Italy. 
So make sure to subscribe and hit that notification button so you don't miss a single episode. And let us know in the comments if you have any tips for visiting Turkey long term or if you have any ideas for Italy where we're heading to next. Thanks for watching and see you next time.